welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be discussing about IEA, that is Indian Evidence Act section, which was drafted in the year 1872. This deals about a set of rules that governs the admissibility of the evidence. Now, let us see some of the important sections under IEA. Firstly, 45 section, which deals with opinion of experts. According to this section, experts are the person who are skilled and having knowledge in these main five subjects. This foreign law, science, art, handwriting or finger impression. The duty of the expert is to act as an advisory, not as the witness of fact. He just deposes his scientific criteria but he doesn't decide. He just helps the judge to make his own independent conclusion. Next is 45A. This was asked in the previous year question paper newly. So just remember these important were goal letters. These are just for the explanation for understanding. Okay. 45A is opinion of examiner of electronic evidence where the court considers the opinion of electronic examiner when there is a problem or issue in the computer related queries or electronic or digital form. Example regarding the hardware, software issues or the copyright infringement of a computer program. In this problem, he will just uh, know the root of how this particular computer program has been created. Coming to 46 IEA, which talks about the facts bearing upon the opinion of experts. That is like when it comes to whether you have to choose facts or opinions of the expert, then the court's preference will be facts because for example if a, comparing to medical officer's opinion and eyewitness where his opinion is actually opposite to that of the eyewitness but eyewitness is considered to be credible and trustworthy then the court accepts the eyewitness fact only next coming to 47 iea section where it is the relevancy of opinion as to handwriting. That is where the court accepts the opinion of non-handwriting expert. That is especially who has acquainted the knowledge of a particular person who know his handwriting like by seeing the person write or the habitual submission of the person's documents where his handwriting is present like as a record keeper then the court considers. Next 47A is talking about the relevancy of opinion as to electronic signature. Just like uh, when there is a problem in the court that a particular person tells that in a so and so certificate the electronic signature is mine. At that case the court considers the opinion of the certifying authority who has issued the certificate. Next 48 IEA section, its relevancy of opinion as to the existence of right or custom. That is the person who has a good knowledge of the existence of the right can give the opinion. That should be usually general custom or right like a public right, not something private rights like a contract or agreement between two persons is not considered. Next coming to 49 section where relevancy of opinion as to usages and tenets etc. It is that the opinion of the person who has the knowledge of the special practices that happens in the family or religious foundation from generation to generation. Those opinions can also be considered or the opinion on meanings of words which may differ from a particular district to the other. So those are also considered. Next coming to 50 IEA section where the relevancy of opinion as to relationship where the question of relationship is put like especially if the so and so person is the father of the child or not like that. In that case the opinion of the person who has the knowledge and the relationship like maybe the member of the family or the person who has special knowledge in the relationship like maybe the family doctor but the exception is that in case of marriage relationship proving it is not sufficient 
like where you have to prove marriage relationship is in the divorce case cases like adultery bigamy or detaining a married woman so in that case this alone cannot be sufficient 51 iea section talks about the relevancy of grounds of opinions it tells us the opinion of uh, any person can also be relevant uh, if the grounds based on that is also there like for example an excise duty officer tells that a particular liquor is illicit in that case he should just not only give the opinion but he should also prove with his experiment and his data coming to 58 iea section talks about the facts admitted need not be proved tells us that once the fact has already been admitted as the hearing or as the written form in the agreement it is not necessary that you have to prove 60 iea section talks about the oral evidence which must be direct and positive that is the witness has to tell the facts that he has actually seen has personally experienced not that someone has told and that he is telling as the oral evidence no 73 section talks about comparison of signature writing or seal this is where usually done by the expert but the court has the right to at any time ask for and compare the signature writing or seal next is 101 ia section talks about burden of proof if a person wants to prove the existence of particular fact then it is whole and whole depends on him to take the burden to prove the particular fact 113a ia section talks about presumption as to abatement of suicide by a married woman when the question is whether the commission of suicide by a woman had been abetted by her husband or relative of her husband this is when uh, if she has committed the suicide within 7 years of her marriage or and also she has subjected to cruelty then the court presumes that he is the reason for her suicide 113b tells about the presumption as to dowry death this is where when there is a question put to that the person might have been the reason for dowry death of a woman this is where if that person has subjected the woman to cruelty demand of the dowry and death has occurred then he is responsible for dowry death next is 114a iea section talks about presumption as to absence of consent in certain prosecutions of rape like suppose if a rape has been occurred then the woman without the consent or with the consent of the woman is the question if the woman tells that she did not consent then the court presumes the same 137 is something talking about the procedures in examining witness in a court of law that is uh, the examination chief done by the same attorney or his own attorney cross examination of witness by the opposite attorney re examination is by the same his own attorney to clear the doubt that has been made in the cross examination suppose in exam they ask you whether the uh, examination in chief comes under which section then it you have to tell 137 or if they are separately for cross examination re examination also you have to mention the same next coming to the order of examinations so this comes under 138 that tells it should be in the same order next we'll go to 141 iea section talking about the leading questions which tells us any question that has the answer itself and it just wishes to tell yes or no 142 is when the leading questions must not be asked this is when if the opposite party objects the leading questions in examination in chief or re examination usually in these cases they will object but there is an exception in that like where if it is an introductory or undisputed cases or where the opinion has already been formed or been proven then in these cases they can go for leading questions 143 is where when leading questions may be asked it's where cross examination happens 146 talks about questions lawful in cross examination this is where usually they 
consider to test his veracity that is whether the witness is telling the truth or not to identify him or to make him discover who, who is he or uh, sometimes it may shake the credit of the witness too in order to get the truth next coming to 148 section talks about the court has the right to decide when a witness is compelled to answer this is when he is compelled when the question is proper usually if the truth of imputation would seriously affect if his opinion has a very serious impact on the truth then he should if it doesn't have any serious effect on the truth then it is not necessary if suppose there is no serious effect of truth but still the there is a question against the importance of the witness or against the witness character then it is not compelled but if suppose the witness refuses to answer to a particular question that the court has a right to draw that this person is refusing because if he tells the answer it may cause some unfavorable situation that's the reason he is refusing next is 151 iea section talks about the indecent and scandalous questions this should be avoided where it's not related to the fact this question should not be asked 159 finally is talking about the refreshing memory where if a witness wants to refer or see some writings he can he can refresh his memory by looking at his own writing or the other's book at the times of proceedings finally ending up with the quote be stronger than your excuses these excuses are just an obstacle overcome them by making your will stronger than these distractions thank you for watching the video till the end if you like the video kindly put a like share and subscribe for more and more videos